The last part of section 5.9 and the last part of unit 5 is solving quadratic equations that involve complex numbers. Now as we've talked about in class and in prior videos, we've seen that there is a case when you solve a quadratic equation where the particular graph does not intersect the x-axis. Therefore, in this case, it has zero real solutions, but it probably has two complex or non-real solutions. The case we're going to talk about in this video is this one right here, where you have a quadratic equation, but its graph does not cross the x-axis. And if you remember putting all the information we've studied so far this unit together, that would be a situation where the discriminant, the part I just circled, that's the part where the discriminant has a value less than zero. Obviously, the number underneath the square root sign is going to be a negative number. And that is when we encounter this type of situation. So, put that information together, try and memorize that, realize that goes together, and let's solve some problems. Example number one, x squared plus 10 equals zero. Now, the first thing that I notice is that the general equation of a quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, I've got the x squared part. This number is 1. However, the bx part is missing. The b value is actually 0 because there is no x term over here, and the c is 10. Well, if there's no x term, this is really easy to solve because we can just do the balance scale to this, and we're going to minus 10 to both sides, and we get x squared equals negative 10. And to undo the square, we do the square root to both sides. So the square and the square root will cancel. And I get x equals. And remember, anytime you solve an equation by doing the square root, there are two answers, the positive and the negative answer. I'll write that down for you. When solving a, I'll write the word a, a squared equation, by taking the square root, there are two solutions, the positive one and the negative one. So I get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 10. Now, as you saw in a prior video, we can't leave it this way. So I'm going to write this as plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 10 because we can't have negative signs in our square root and if you recall this is the value i so therefore i get the two solutions to this problem are plus or minus i square roots of 10 because that's what the square root of negative 1 is and that's my answer to example number 1 example number 2 same idea. x squared plus 28 equals 0. Well, I'm missing the bx part. The b value is 0. So therefore, I can just solve this with the balance scale. So I'm going to minus 28 to both sides. These cancel. And I get x squared equals negative 28. And again, to get rid of the square, I do the square root of both sides, which gives me two answers, plus or minus the square root of negative 28. Now again, we need to think, can we break this down? I'm going to go back a slide. If The square root of 10, there's no perfect square that goes into 10, so I just left the answer. However, square root of 28 can break apart, like you learned back in Unit 1. So I can write this as plus or minus the square root. Of course, I need my negative 1 to come out. And then 28 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. You must always write your answer in simplest form. So my final answer, if I simplify everything, plus or minus, the square root of 4 is 2. We put that first. 
The square root of negative 1 is i. We put that second. And then the square root of 7, which we can't simplify any further, we put last. And those are our two solutions to the problem. Since it's a squared equation, it's got to have at most two solutions. The last one. Now, if you take a look at example 3, you're going to notice, uh-oh, we have an x term this time. Therefore, we need to use either factoring or the quadratic formula to solve this one. Well, remember, we got to make it equal to 0. So I need to add 6x to both sides, and I also need to add 11 to both sides. Therefore, these will cancel out, and I get x squared plus 6x plus 11 equals 0. And that's the equation I'm trying to solve. Again, it has at most two solutions. So using the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, the whole thing divided by 2a. And I'm now going to substitute my numbers in. a is 1 b is 6, and c is 11. So putting those numbers in, I get negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 11, the whole thing divided by 2 times 1. Now, if I simplify that, again, I'm going to do the discriminant first, you're going to find out that you're going to get a negative number. So I get negative 6 plus or minus the square root, and the discriminant value turns out to be negative 8, the whole thing divided by 2. Now I'm going to draw an arrow. I'm going to go up over here to finish my problem. I've got to break that negative square root of 8 apart. So I get negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 8. But I hope we also realize that the square root of 8 has a perfect square in it, which is the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, and then the whole thing divided by our number 2, which equals negative 6 plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of negative 1 is i over the times the square root of 2, and then the whole thing divided by 2. Now, we're going to break this apart. I can write this as negative 6 divided by 2, plus or minus, that's, this is the real part, and then the imaginary part is 2i square roots of 2 divided by 2. Well, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to do a little erasing here. I'm actually going to go back up to the top. This part is negative 3, and then the plus or minus, and then these 2's reduce, they cancel out, which leaves you plus or minus i square roots of 2. And it's okay to leave your answer like that, or if you're going to break them apart, the first answer to this problem is negative 3 plus i square roots of 2, and the second answer would be negative 3 minus i square roots of 2 which is maybe the better form to write your answer in since we know that there was two solutions to the problem. And we have written them in complex number form. The real part is first and the imaginary part is second. And that is how you solve a problem, especially a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula and where the solutions turn out to be complex numbers.